Parik Mahoney. Parik, how are things with you? My lads, how's it going? So it's the last Not time we were bad. chatting to you, you were, you were a couple of days after celebrating in All-Ireland. I can remember it well. I must have been shook, I'd say, at that stage. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, uh, Parik is joining us ahead of the 2022 AIB Monster GA Senior Hurling Championship Final, which takes place this Saturday, December 3rd, at FBD Semple Stadium in Tipperary, where Ballygunner take on Ballier of Clare. The AIB GA All-Ireland Club Championship features some of the hashtag toughest players from communities all across Ireland, and it's these very communities that the players represent that make the AIB GA All-Ireland Club Championships unique. Now in its 32nd year supporting the club championships, AIB is extremely proud to once again celebrate the communities that play such a role in sustaining our national games. Park, can you tell us about the match you played against the Piershig last weekend? Uh, the intensity was off the charts for club. Like, to me, was this a new level of club? Like, how close is it getting to inter-county physicality? Yeah, no, I'm not too sure. Like, uh, I think maybe it was a kind of a, maybe had a blend of good quality hurling and the physicality. Certainly over the last couple of years, I'd say that we've played some club games that have been equally as competitive. Maybe it's just the standard of hurling that wasn't maybe there alongside it. Um, but definitely, I think the standard of club hurling at the moment is, is very high right across the, the, the country. Um, and maybe I think teams are probably putting a lot more emphasis on off the field work in terms of gym, fitness, so I think teams are better prepared now as well. So I think the standard has definitely been kind of raised and raised year on year. Michael? Can I just ask you, Parik, on, on your own performance, I, I'm not going to blow, blow you up too much because I know you've had lads doing that for, for the last week or so, but in your own head, when you hit a couple of early wides, or is, is any part of you thinking, oh, this mightn't be my day or whatever, or do you just, from experience, do you just say, keep shooting, keep doing what you're supposed to do? Yeah, and um, that's it, I suppose. You know, within the group in Ballygunner, like we're a very close knit group and kind of no one kind of really, there's no blame game or there's no, you know, questioning someone, you know, once you're kind of doing the right things and trying to do the right things, um, you know, that's all we ask of each other. And that's no different, I suppose, with me hitting the freeze, you know, no one knows that, everyone knows, sorry, that you're not deliberately trying to miss a free, like so. Um, but again, for me, it's just kind of resetting and, trying to maybe make do something positive with the next play, whether that's something simple like get a hook or a block in or, you know, win a ball and just lay it off to someone. Something as simple as that can kind of get you resetting and just focusing on the next ball in. Has Tony mm. O'Gregan had a big influence with G Park? I know you mentioned him before, but even with you, you're going through, a, you know, a free-taking routine where, you know, repetition is so, so important and doing the same thing over and over again. Has, has he helped you personally and just as a team as well? Yeah, definitely. It's definitely benefited the group. Um, I suppose from my own side, I kind of haven't changed anything in terms of routine over the last number of years. And probably, you know, as you can see, it's the same um, routine for the last probably, say, 10 years plus years. Uh, but obviously, from a uh, mindset, you can definitely tweak things. And even in terms of the build up to, to a play. But I, I suppose as a group, we, we kind of, it's more so just the whole, you know, dynamic outside the of the pitch maybe that we're trying to work on as, be as best as possible and I think you know if you're coming to the field every night with a clear head and a clear you know in, in a good place I think naturally you're going to give a lot more you're going to get more out of training session you know so it's I suppose it's trying to find that balance between having a good structure outside your 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 the hurling pitch to allow you to actually you nearly know, bring and perform on the on the hurling pitch. I was just thinking at the end of last year, uh, Park, after you won the All Ireland, and then Liam Cahill was being asked about getting you know all the boys back in, and he said it'll take a while to get you up to the pace of inter county after you know. And we would have looked at the game against Bally Hale and said, "Wow, that's at a serious level." Like, did you find when you went back that there was an adjustment period because county was that bit uh, you know way uh, ahead of club? Yeah, like there definitely is a step up. Um, there's no point saying any different. There, 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 there is a difference in in. In intensity when when you go into the inter county game and maybe I don't know sometimes it feels like a lot more gets let go maybe at at inter county because maybe the crowd and you don't you know like simple things you don't even hear a chop at inter county level because it's the noise is just the stadium could be could be shaking at the time so there is there's definitely an, an adjustment period but I, I don't think it takes that long to get to the to the level like obviously from from our side last year you know we would have we'd like to think that we were preparing as well and training as hard as any in the county team. So that has to definitely get you to a certain level. So maybe the extra 10, 15% then is just getting back in around the group, 
couple of games, a couple of internal games, and then you should be at the pitch of, of where you need to be. Hmm. Is, is life easier when you're uh, during the club part of the year or the county part of the year? Where, where do you get your most enjoyment? Yeah, like, I suppose it's hard to, it's hard to kind of say when you're winning, I suppose, wherever you're, wherever you're winning, it's more enjoyable. But from, from, our, from our side, obviously, there's, there's huge satisfaction about, I suppose, achieving something big with your club. Um, and, you know, obviously last year was, was uh, couldn't, couldn't get any better for us. But even this year too, you know, even the hard kind of slog that we would have done with the club, having that kind of gap between inter-county and club season was nice. Um, and being around the lads and, you know, there's always, obviously a great crack. There's a, a huge mix between, you know, lads 17, 18 compared to lads, say, who are in their 30s. And it's just, it, it's, you can kind of see how things kind of move on naturally in, 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 in a in a GA club too, and it's 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 for us maybe at the other side we're kind of trying to maximise every opportunity that we get. But there's a huge lift that you get from seeing young lads come in, eighteen, nineteen, and they're so much into their diet and the gym, and you know you're like Jesus. If we were only like that when we were eighteen, nineteen, what could we what could we achieve? And you know, but so it's uh, yeah. The, at the moment, we're just really really enjoying the club season. I think mm-hmm. Philip mentioned it before, Park about. Um, even been motivated by the likes of Desi and even your, a couple of your younger brothers as well, seeing the level that they're trying to take it to and they motivate you a bit more and kind of push you to push yourselves even a bit more. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, obviously we're all trying to learn and to develop. And even as, you know, you look at Shane O'Sullivan, for example, he's arguably adding to his game, you know, at 36 or 37, um, which is obviously a credit to him. But, we're all very much kind of open-minded within the team to kind of, and you know, whether that's someone like, you know, you know, we see something, whether it's rugby or something in the World Cup, you might, you know, hear, see an interview or hear someone say something, or, you know, it's easy to see how that could be adapted to, to hurling. And obviously Desi coming back in definitely brought and new ideas, but also probably brought huge new energy to everyone that we do in Valley Gunner. And, and yes, we're very much grateful for that. Mm. Desi's a bit of a cheat code, isn't he, out in the field? The, re- the rest of the clubs, we all find it very unfair that you you were able to add him. He's so good. <laughs> I know, but like to be fair, you look at you know the what people don't see is the work that Desi does off the pitch. Um, you know, he he's he, he nails everything, I suppose, in terms of his preparation, and he'd be the first down the pitch doing shooting. He'd be could be the last off the pitch. He's the person who could be, you know, doing extra work, whether it's tackling or, you know, he's always trying to better himself. And maybe that's, I suppose, the environment maybe that he would have seen over in Brighton. Um, but yeah, and I suppose when you have someone like that coming back into the to our setup then in Ballygunner, you know, all of a sudden young lads see it and they think maybe maybe that's the norm, maybe that's what they need to do. And if I want to be as good as Desi or play with Desi, well, that's, that's the level I need to get to. And so it's just creating a good environment. Did, um, were all your brothers always destined to be hurlers? Obviously, Philip is older than you, so he kind of plotted the path first. But were Kevin and Mikey always likely to be hurlers as well? Yeah, I suppose maybe. Um, you know, if you look at the group of player the group of lads that they would have hanging around with when they're younger, like obviously involved in, in the senior panel at the moment, the likes of Paddy Levy, Kevin, you know, Sean Harney, Owen O'Brien. Um, Gavin Corbett, all these young lads that are coming in that maybe are uh, you know either on the panel or on kind of our intermediate panel and starting at the intermediate team, they all kind of hung around together the same age. So it's, it kind of makes it a lot easier then where you kind of think you're going off meeting the lads and here you're bringing a hurley with you. And I suppose it's just, again, starts young and, and you can kind of, you kind of follow the same path as your friends or as maybe you're in, in our case, maybe it was, they see me and Philip the owners that they thought yeah, that's the way I have to kind of go myself. But I suppose never we were never being put under too much pressure as such when we were younger to that, you know, you have to play hurling. And we would have and I still would encourage any young lad to play as much sports as possible, whether it's, you know, Gaelic football, soccer, rugby, golf, whatever it is. Um, and then eventually then you you'll, you'll make up your mind where you where you kinda of want to um I suppose what you want to pursue is because you can't obviously do them all, and when you get to the maybe 15, 16, you have to kind of make some hard choices. Hmm. Can I just ask you about the semi final at half time the last day, Park? Um, was there a fair bit of figuring out that you needed to do at half time? And how, uh, 
how much trust or faith in you have in what you're doing when you know you've gotten over the line, if you get me. If that had been a couple of years ago, would it would have been would there have been maybe a slight bit of panic at halftime where it doesn't look like there was any the other day? Yeah, perhaps. Um I suppose it's it's hard to tell whether last year had an impact on how we responded the last day, but you know, I think we on reflection we knew that there was certain things we were actually doing pretty well in that first half, but you know, come up with, against a team with the caliber of players that the Piercing have, they were always going to have a spell where they were going to dominate. Um, so perhaps maybe five points was we kept it to a manageable level because you know maybe that could easily be in seven, eight, nine points. Um, so yeah, I think I, I, we just knew that we needed to do more of the good stuff in the second half, and, and thankfully we did. How how wary of you are you going into the Munster final as well, Parik, of the fact that like let's call it a spade a spade, and we've done it here on this show as well. We're already like building up to an All Ireland semi final rematch between yourselves and Ballyhale, even though neither of you have won your provinces yet. You have a fair task in front of you uh, against Ballyhale. Yeah, and I think look, this team. I know we, people probably maybe don't believe when we're saying it, but we've always looked one game at a time and. Whether that's the first round of you know a county championship match in, in Warford, the first group stage, I think we kind of pride ourselves on being able to be at the pitch of things of where we need to be in terms of our preparation, our mindset, and our, our performance. Um, for no matter what game we're playing, um, because you know you need to you need to practice this. You can't just turn up on the day of a big game. Like if we weren't doing it all along, and next minute all of a sudden we came to the last Sunday's game, where maybe things were up another level. Um, we would have been blown out of that game. So, uh, and again, you know, you just talking ahead to this weekend. Um, you know, you think back a couple of years ago when we played Ballier inside in Welsh Park. I know it was another classic game, um, where I think we we were we were three points down with with thirty seconds left on the clock. I think and Philip doubled one into the net. So you know, we we know the challenge that we're facing this weekend, and certainly not looking beyond it. Uh, Nisha Waldron, who obviously played with you in Ballygunner for a while, he said, this is about your, your answer on your brother's go away, boy. If the boys didn't play a hurling, they'd have been thrown out of the house. Oh, I don't know about that now, I don't know. Um, we're all uh, very much keen into the golf and there's a few other sports there. I actually remember years ago, um, I'm not sure what age it was now, but I was playing soccer, hurling and rugby, and um, they were all clashing on one Saturday morning and I ended up going playing the rugby match. So... Um, it wasn't completely plain sailing in terms of the direction we were going, whether it was going to be hurling or nothing else. So, how did you justify going playing rugby ahead of, ahead of uh, hurling? I don't know. I'd say I must be about thirteen or fourteen at the time, but because I remember I had the hurling manager on, the soccer manager on, the Roy giving out. So, at the time, maybe I had an idea. I, I was playing, I think, out half. So maybe I was trying, thinking I was going to be rolling a harder at one stage. But that was back, I think. I think a year later, I was after finishing playing rugby, so I didn't. Make too much of a difference. Um, what, what did you think when you heard the news that Davy Fitz was taking over the Watford job? Yeah, it's very exciting for everyone in Watford. Um, you know, I suppose if you look at where Davy's been over the last number of years, um, success has followed. Um, and obviously, I would have worked with Davy in 2011 in, in with Watford as well. And obviously, I can, you know, he, he was bringing a new kind of standard. That we weren't aware of, I say, in Warford around that time. Um, so you can only imagine now with another maybe ten years of, of managerial experience under his belt, what he's learned. And um, so yeah, it's it, the players are obviously very, very excited to get going. And I suppose you're kind of just uh, you know you want to kind of get a, get a good block of work done now between now and maybe you know league and and then obviously you know really hit the ground running for championship this year or next year. Mm. Uh, when when people look back at this year, a lot is said about you know how it went wrong, and people are saying, "Oh, that you know Jim McGinn is coming in and doing a session." And a lot is thrown at that. What difference did that make having Jim in? The, what was the session like? I'm not too sure, really. Like people can look if we went out and we bet Cork that day in Welsh Park, you know, the whole year could have been completely different. It's really it's it's Munster Championship is so competitive. Um, as you can see, like last last year, if you look at it, that Saturday night down in the Gaelic grounds, like we, I think it was three points in or maybe at the end against Limerick. Um, if you know, poke the ball, maybe if we got a draw that day, things could have been completely different for for the remainder of the year. So, you know, Munster, if you get out of here, out of the province, you know, first, second, or third in the in in the group, 
I think you're in a very strong position then going into the All Ireland series. But as we've seen, you know, we probably thought we were in a relatively good position going into that Cork game. And, you know, as we've seen after Cork, uh, Cork, Limerick, Clare, Waterford, Tipperary, you know, anyone can beat anyone on any day. And that's the joys of Munster Hurling. So just like that, the year was turned upside down, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, not to press too much with the gym thing, but did he do anything like kind of tactical with you? Because obviously there's such cra- crossover between football and hurling, or was it just more just a normal session or a running session? No, like again, it's kind of just, I suppose, trying to hit, yeah, probably had a similar kind of um, place, come from a similar place where they were maybe a good few years back, um, and just trying to get an extra percent or two, really. That's all it was about. And obviously, if, 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 you know, if we if we performed against Cork, well then, you know, nothing nothing we said about it. And ultimately at the end of the day, as as players did not didn't didn't perform to the level that we're capable of in that game and, and ultimately, you know, we have to look at ourselves first and foremost. Hmm. It'll be good fun when you come up against Tipperary next year. <laughs> yeah, it will, it will, no doubt. Um but yeah, look, I think it's uh, obviously it's a good while away now, but it won't be long from around at the same time. But I think um, you can be sure that Tipperary are going to get a huge kick out of Liam going back in there. And um, obviously from more of side too, there's plenty of new managers right around the country this year. So I think there's definitely going to be an exciting uh, 2023 championship. Yeah, Michael? Just uh, personally yourself, Parik, um, you obviously 2020 and 2021 were kind of uh, badly undone by injuries. And maybe you probably didn't play maybe as much last year as you'd like coming back from the club campaign. Is there a bit of like unfinished business with the with the county season next year, whenever that does come around? Yeah, like I suppose when you get to my stage, you're probably kind of you're assessing everything really. And I suppose with Davey coming in, it does definitely give you a kind of a, a new lease of life. Um, definitely. Um, and obviously at the moment it's kind of hard because you're trying to completely you're so focused on Bally Gunner and trying to maximize the year that we have in front of us at Valley Gunner and then obviously you kind of need a break um to a, to a certain degree before you can kind of you know um I suppose throw your throw your lot in with water and that and then initial conversations with Davey that's 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 the plan so it kind of makes it a lot more exciting knowing that once we finish up with Valley Gunner there's going to be a, a window there where we can kind of recharge the batteries and and then go for help for letter with Waterford. so I think all the Valley Gunner lads are obviously hugely excited about the deployment to Davey We'd love to. We'd love to know uh, what what the names of all the personnel of all the Bally Gunner lads are. But I doubt. I doubt we'll find that out maybe till uh, closer to the time. Because I'd be. I'd be hoping from a hurling point of view anyway that your that your goalkeeper might go back in. But that might be something. Uh, that might be something we'll find out down the road. Yeah, I'm not too sure. No, um, you'll have to talk to Stephen on that one. <laughs> Yeah, he's been. I'd say he doesn't even want to do interviews at the moment because anytime he does one, he's just been asked about that, isn't he? Yeah, no, it is. I suppose it is. And look, I, I, to be honest, I haven't had a conversation with him either because I said we're solely focused on Bally Gunner now at the moment. And um, any conversation that we'll be having now is about what we're going to try and you know what we need to do for the weekend and whatnot. So, um, or else it's on the World Cup or the NFL or something like that. So there's plenty of distractions out there at the moment. And to be worried, in, 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 I suppose, what's happening now rather than what's going to be happening in a couple of months' time. And are you stuck into the World Cup at the moment or are you interested? Ah, yeah, no, we all are, I suppose, sure. I suppose it's, it's hard not to be when there's matches on the telly 24-7. But um, obviously last night, I think we, we had a... We had a I know we had a cracker last night, so I, was, I think um, from here on in now, once it kind of gets to the last 16, I think everyone will, will be good to it. Mm, absolutely. Well, look, it's been brilliant chatting to you, Park. Really appreciate you coming on and best of luck in the final this weekend. Cheers, lads. Thank you.